Oh yeah, get ready for another fun English lesson with Taylor Swift. In this video, we are featuring a clip from her new Netflix documentary, Miss Americana. I feel really good about not feeling muzzled anymore, and it was my own doing. There's nothing that feels better than this moment. And then we will break down part of her hit song, Lover. And just to let you know, if you're new here, every week we make fun lessons with your favorite movies, TV series, songs, and more so that you can understand fast-speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Genesis says that we're helping her in her dream to work on airplanes, and we'll help you to reach your English learning goals too. Just hit the subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. Everybody in music has their own sort of niche specialty thing that they do that, you know, sets them apart from everybody else. And my storytelling is what it is for me. I, I, I know that without me writing my own songs, I wouldn't be here. There is an element to my fan base where we feel like we grew up together. I'll, I'll be going through something, write the album about it, and then it'll come out, and sometimes it'll just coincide with what they're going through. Kind of, kind of like they're reading my diary. Everybody in music has their own sort of niche specialty thing that they do that, you know, sets them apart from everybody else. Niche is a word used to refer to a position particularly well suited to the person or group that occupies it. You ready for your meeting? Yep. Don't forget to smile. All right, your movie's a little bit heavy, so keep the room light. Do you not think I'm a good filmmaker? It's not what I said. I think you're great. I think you're a great children's book illustrator, a terrific uh, jewelry designer. I love the homemade ice cream business. I am familiar with my eclectic resume. Thank you very much. But honey, with this film, you know it. I found my niche. I can fly. I believe I can fly. So the term niche is mostly used to refer to some kind of professional specialty. That is a subject that someone knows a lot about and does better than anybody else. So Taylor is saying that in music, everybody has something that distinguishes them from the rest. And my storytelling is what it is for me. I, I, I know that without me writing my own songs, I wouldn't be here. Storytelling is the act of telling stories. As you might know, most of Taylor's lyrics tell stories. And from her point of view, that is what makes her different from the other singers in the music industry.
until is a very common contraction of the word until. She is saying that they can leave the Christmas lights up until whenever they want, even if Christmas decorations are usually removed by the end of December or beginning of January. There is an element to my fan base where we feel like we grew up together. The term element can refer to a part of something. Example, this book has all the elements of a good story. The fan base of someone, such as a pop star or a pop group, is their fans, considered as a whole. Some examples of fan bases are the Believers, fans of Justin Bieber, or the Directioners, fans of One Direction. Let's listen again to the way that Taylor says this phrase. There is an element to my fan base where we feel like we grew up together. Here we have a good example of connected speech. This is the way that natives link their words together. Up is a preposition, which is an example of a function word. These words reduce and connect to content words like grow or grew. So, instead of saying grew up, Taylor says grew up. Natives do this all the time. Let's look at some more examples of this type of sound morphing. Don't you want your child to grow up in a world where there are penguins? We can't quit now. The holidays are coming up. It's our best season. What the hell do you do on a real day? <laughs> Shut up and put my table back. So you can learn a ton by doing the things you love, like watching series like Friends and movies like Frozen, but is it enough? Well, in my experience learning six different languages, I have always found that native media and keeping it fun are essential parts of the process. But sooner or later, I would always get stuck. And this made me lack confidence because I knew I was making mistakes, but I didn't really know what I needed to focus on learning to correct them and my friends weren't corrected me, and they didn't really know either how to explain the grammar to me. So at some point, just music, books, and series aren't enough. You need the guidance of a teacher. So for me, having the guidance of a professional who has tons of experience helping people who are having the same learning challenges is essential. And that's why I'm excited to present a great new opportunity from our friends over at Lingoda. They are going to help you to improve your speaking skills and your confidence quickly in just a matter of months. And the great part about this promotion is that when you fully participate in all of the classes, you can get a 100% refund. So I've tried Lingoda and it is fantastic. You get to learn with native teachers anytime you want and they give you all of the materials you need so you know exactly what you need to focus on. So over the past few years, Lingoda has helped 20,000 learners just like you to transform their lives, getting opportunities to work and study abroad. You can see some of their inspiring stories on Lingoda's website by clicking the link down below and definitely check out their Instagram as well. So what exactly is this promotion? So Lingoda has a motivating study challenge called the Sprint. And this is really fantastic because it gets you committed to learning. As both a coach and a language learner myself, I know that having this accountability is absolutely crucial because it, otherwise it's too easy to skip when you're tired or busy. And with the Super Sprint, you will be showing up every single day and you're going to make huge progress on your learning unless you do the sprint in which you do slightly less classes. Now, when you complete all of the classes in the Super Sprint, you will be getting a 100% refund. And if you complete the sprint, you'll get a 50% refund. It's open to all levels, whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or advanced. And as a bonus, you will have free access to the Cambridge Online Language Test. The sprint begins on April 8th and ends on July 6th. All right, so in order to participate, you have to sign up before March 24th. After paying your 49 euro non-refundable deposit fee, which holds your spot, you will automatically be signed up for a three month subscription. But don't worry, this deposit goes towards paying your first month of classes. And remember that Lingoda will refund 100% of your tuition fee if you complete the agreed number of classes. There's no trick or catch here. But be sure to read all of the terms and conditions as students say that this is the key to success in the sprint. And to make it even better for you, we have a special discount code for you. Just click the link down in the description box below and use our code to get 10 euros off of your entry fee. Now, if you already have good habits learning English with TV series and other native media, then I think Lingoda Sprint could be a really awesome opportunity for you. 
Just imagine if in three months you could confidently converse with a native, or get an exciting new job, or move to another country. And you could do it all for free by completing Lingoda's Sprint. Best of luck to all of you that participate in the Sprint. And now, let's get back to this lesson with Taylor Swift. I'll, I'll be going through something, write the album about it, and then it'll come out, and sometimes it'll just coincide with what they're going through. If you face a difficult period or experience, you'd say that you're going through it. Hey, anyone here from Phoebe yet? No, nothing. I hope she's okay. Yeah, I know exactly what she's going through. How do you know exactly what she's going through? She told us. <laughs> Which of these words could you use as a synonym of go through? Taylor's saying that after going through a certain situation that is difficult for her, like a breakup for example, she writes many songs about it creating an album. If something comes out, it means that it becomes known or it's revealed. For example, Taylor's new album was released on August 23rd, and before that date her new songs were unknown. Coincide is a word used to refer to two or more things happening at the same time. Example, I tied my holiday to coincide with the children's. Taylor is highlighting that her fans and she tend to go through similar experiences at the same time. Kind of, kind of like they're reading my diary. A diary is a daily written record of experiences and observations. It is usually personal, so people don't share it with anybody else. Taylor saying that sometimes she feels so close to her fans when it comes to her life's experiences that it is like they were reading her diary. If someone's your lover, that person is your partner in a romantic relationship, without necessarily being married. We could leave the Christmas lights up till January. This is our place. We make the rules. There's a dazzling haze, a mysterious way about you, dear. Have I known you 20 seconds or 20 years? Can I go? This is a very common and informal way to refer to your house. Oh my mind, I pass my bedtime, no rest at the kingdom. Alone in my place, my heart is away. All that I can think of is we should get married. We should get married. Let's stop holding back on this and let's get carried away. Taylor's saying that in her and her partner's house, they make the rules together. There's a dazzling haze, a mysterious way about you, dear. 
Something dazzling is very impressive or beautiful. And if you say that there's haze, the atmosphere looks like this. Taylor's using adjectives usually found in fantasy to express how her relation feels like a dream or fairy tale. She's also saying that she feels intrigued by him, and she finds him mysterious. Did you notice how Taylor said about to you? And there's a dazzling haze, a mysterious way about you, dear. Here is another common example of connected speech. When we have a T and Y sound together, even in different words, it often morphs into a CH sound. So instead of about to you, she said, about you, dear. Let's practice this with some more examples. Big reputation, big reputation. Oh, you and me would be a big conversation. Ah, and I heard about you. Oh, you like the bad ones too? Have you no idea that you're in deep? I dreamt about you nearly every night this week. How many secrets can you keep? Have I known you 20 seconds? Years. By saying, have I known you 20 seconds or 20 years, she implies that it feels like they've spent a lifetime together, even though it probably hasn't been that long. Let's also look at how she said these numbers. Have I known you 20 seconds or 20 years? So did you notice that she didn't say it like 20? How did she actually say it? Often, when we have an N plus a T together, we drop the T sound. So instead of saying 20, natives usually say 20. Let's hear some other examples. Baby, my heart could still fall us hard at 23. Say you gotta leave, but I know you wanna stay. You just waiting on the traffic jam to finish, girl. The things that we could do in 20 minutes, girl. Say my name, say my name. Can I go where you go? Can we always be this close? Forever and ever and Forever and ever is a phrase used to emphasize the idea that something will happen for now and all time in the future. It is commonly used by children or in children's stories. Example. He promised to be your friend forever and ever. Here, Taylor's using imagery and language of a wedding to highlight how serious her relationship with her boyfriend is. You might also hear this in other formal contexts like a show or a play. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our master of gadgetry, Gary! Hey! <laughs> Did you do a wedding before? Okay, okay, we'll get married again. Oh, Terrence, this is like our wedding, but expensive. <laughs> Flowers for you. Ladies Flowers and gentlemen, you. birds and pigs, we are gathered here today because of these two characters. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand with every guitar string scar on my head? A scar is a mark left on the skin where a wound has not healed completely. The guitar string scars refer to the years she spent writing songs about love and heartbreaks. In a recent interview she gave during her NPR Tiny Desk appearance, she talked about it. I took that as a metaphor for like, you know, the times when I was learning to play guitar and I'd like play till my fingers bled when I was a kid and I still have those marks from that and you know, all the times I'd be like changing a string and it would pop and I still have scars from that. <laughs> um, but it's also a bigger metaphor for like, in life you, you accumulate scars, you accumulate hurt, you accumulate moments of, you know, learning and disappointment and struggle and all that. And if someone's gonna take your hand, they'd better take your hand scars and all. If you love Taylor Swift, well, we have a ton of lessons teaching you English with her in this playlist. You can check that out after you finish this video by clicking up here or down in the description below. I take this magnetic force of a man to be mine. 
Magnetic force is the physical force of attraction. It literally happens between magnetic things. But in a metaphorical way, it can be used to refer that you feel very attracted to someone. My heart's been borrowed and yours has been if you borrow something, you get something from someone with the intention of giving it back after a certain period of time. For example, you would borrow a book in a library or some clothes from a friend. Do you know which word you'd use to say that you're the one borrowing something? Taylor's referring, in a very poetic way, to the wedding tradition where in every ceremony there should be something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. In a figurative sense, if you say that you are blue or you feel blue, you mean that you're sad. We could also say you get the blues, meaning you become sad. Look you kids, you know you're the coolest The world is yours and you can't refuse it Seems so much you could get the blues by That don't mean that you should abuse it So Taylor probably means in these verses that they both have been through sadness and heartaches. End up is a phrasal verb used to say that you're finally in a particular place or situation. All's well that ends well is an expression meaning that problems that occur don't matter as long as there's a positive outcome. In addition, All's well that ends well is a play written by Shakespeare in which Helena must overcome many obstacles to win the heart of the man she loved. So, as you can see, the theme of this play is highly related to Taylor's story. If you swear something, you make a promise about it. Example, I swear I'll never say a word. Overdramatic is an adjective used to say that someone is excessively dramatic. That is, that they tend to exaggerate things. And you'll say all your dirtiest jokes for me. Even though you probably know the word dirty, you may not know that this word can also be used when referring to things connected with sex in a way that many people might consider offensive. Example, you have such a dirty mind. So the dirtiest jokes are the most inappropriate ones. If you save someone a seat, you leave a free space for a person to sit close to the place you're sitting. Everybody in music has their own sort of niche specialty thing that they do that, you know, sets them apart from everybody else. And my storytelling is what it is for me. I, I, I know that without me writing my own songs, I wouldn't. There is an element to my fan base where we feel like we grew up together. I'll, I'll be going through something, write the album about it, and then it'll come out, and sometimes it'll just coincide with what they're going through. Kind of, kind of like they're reading my diary. I've known you 20 seconds, it's 
Well, now I recommend that you listen to that song over and over and over again. Trust me, it's going to do a lot for your English pronunciation, and it's a lot of fun. And if you want to know how you can learn English with any song you want, be sure to check out this video over here. And now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Oh yeah! <laughs>